You're watching Your Miracle Moment. I'm joined by Michelle. Now, Michelle, will you tell us where are you joining us from? I'm from Calvin. Uh, it's uh, just a few kilometers from here. <laughs> and um, it's my first time and it's been a lovely experience and the Holy Spirit's moving and got wow. healed tonight. <laughs> now, you got healed tonight. What were you suffering from before? I had um, what the doctors had um, diagnosed me with scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine. And it was about when I was 16, they diagnosed it. So I don't know if I've been born with it or if I just developed in posture. But I'm now 44 and I've been living with it all my life. And wow. tonight, I just came forward for healing. You have a curved spine. Let's fix your spine. Just come and feel a spine. I just want to see you were born with a curved spine. Is that right? Sit your hands towards that comment. God's going to make this young child perfect. Play, play, play hands quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command the spine to become normal right now. You devil, you devil that's curving the spine, let go. I command the spine to straighten in the way it should normally lie. I curse every abnormality. Whoa! Everything goes. Everything goes. Every lie, every devil, every oppressive spirit goes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whoa, in Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sweetie, I want you to do something you couldn't do before. Okay, let's try and push all the strange things that they said. My arms wouldn't be able to go What? Say it again. Give her a mic. My arms couldn't be able to go straight. I could just because push of your, up here. Because of the past spine. Because of the posture. So I couldn't feel that. No. And God has straightened the spine and... And we also, we even t had your, your husband tested yes. out as well? Yes, yes, he came to test out as well and he said, yes, it has definitely gone and improved. How much better is it? The overdeveloped muscle has yeah. gone down. Oh, what happened to the hump? Feel the hump, where's the hump? <laughs> oh, you can do better than that. Amen, thank you. Wow, that's such incredible testimony. Curvature of the spine, completely healed, completely gone. So we want to encourage you right now to come visit us at the Miracle Center. Come join us for our events and conferences as well. Come expect and come hungry for your breakthrough, for your miracle. Come ready to receive because God's glory, His presence is here. Stay tuned to your miracle moment because miracles are normal. So it means the master, the miracle, and the miserable. Now, we're still stuck with the miracle, and we're probably going to be spending a little more time to discussing miracles, what they are, how they happen, and how to walk in them. And uh, we've started the series, and I'm going to do a very, very quick, just a recap on one or two things. We spoke about the master, that Jesus is the master. He said, I am the way. I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father but through me. Now, who said that? Jesus. What does he mean? He means there are many, many uh, uh, things that you could worship. There are many different religions on the earth. Uh, uh, there are many different deities on the earth. But the only way to get into heaven, if heaven is your destiny, the only way to get into heaven is through him. Who said that? Jesus. He said, no man can come to the Father but through him. And he also said he came to give us life and life abundantly. And God wants you to live. He doesn't want you to exist. He wants you to live. What's the difference? Well, somebody who exists gets up in the morning and say, good Lord, it's morning again. But somebody who lives gets up and says, good morning, Lord. That's the difference between somebody who lives and somebody who exists. You see, somebody who exists is only concentrating all the things that are going wrong in their lives. But somebody who lives 
It's a person who gets up and knows, hey, I have a destiny. God's got a plan for my life. There's some stuff I got to do. There's some stuff I got to achieve. And you know what? I got no time to waste. I got no time to die right now. <laughs> I got to live my destiny, live my purpose, and fulfill the reason why I've been sent to the earth. Somebody who lives has a passion. They're driven by a passion to live. And that passion comes from Jesus Christ. It gives you that passion. And when the day you meet him, you are stared with a passion inside to do what you could never do before. You know, you're like the people from Star Trek. You go where no man has gone before. With God. And that's what it means to live. And of course, much more. So Jesus is the master. And we spoke about him. We spoke about him giving you rest and what it means to have rest. Then we spoke about miracles. We said God is a God of miracles. Jesus looked at them and said, Look, with men, this is impossible to do these things. But with God, all things are possible. All things happen. He said, hey, if you have a little bit of, of faith, like a mustard seed, a tiny little bit of faith, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So he said he's a God of miracles. We spoke about the things that hinder your miracle. Why is it some people are struggling to have breakthroughs? Then we spoke about uh, calming the wind and sea, the, the ability to command. When Jesus was in the boat, uh, he was sleeping in the boat. There was a storm. There was a, there was a hurricane, the Bible says, that came up. There was the wave started to, to, to toss the boat to and fro, and the boat began to sink. And as the boat was sinking, the disciples became afraid, and they went to Jesus. They woke him and said, Jesus, Jesus, we're drowning. Save us, save us. He got up, he calmed, he did a double miracle. He calmed the storm, and he calmed the waves at the same time, and they were calm. The disciples were amazed. They said, what kind of man is this? But Jesus said, where is your faith? What's wrong with you? I was with you in this storm. Didn't you see me sleeping in the boat there? Now, you know that God does not sleep so the physical Jesus Jesus the perfect man was sleeping but Jesus the perfect God never sleeps he that keep the Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps so Jesus was saying hey I was with you while you were going through the storm in fact he says I am with you always I will never leave you nor forsake you I'll be with you to the very end of the age so he says in your crisis I was with you but I was watching to see how you would handle the crisis and fix it. So they, instead of fixing the crisis, they turned around and said, Jesus, Jesus, save us. And he said, hold on. Where's your faith? You could have done this. And then he said, okay, fine, I'll do your job. He gets up, he says, wind stop, storm stop, and it stops. So what is God teaching us? When we go through a crisis, it seems God is silent. When God is silent in a crisis, He's expecting you to take authority and to command the situation. Amen? So there's some situations we pray about and others we command. And that's why they said, hey, what kind of man is this? Remember the Bible says, you must ask and you shall receive. And if you ask and you get no response, nothing seems to be coming, then you should seek. Seek means you go a little deeper. You start fasting, praying, waiting upon God. But if you seek and you get no response, then it's time to kick the door open. Sometimes people say, well, pastor, when must I command things? You will learn along the way. If you asked and seeked and nothing happened, start commanding. But eventually, your faith level grows inside you. So that in every situation, you are like your Father in heaven. You command that situation. So what am I saying? I'm saying if sickness comes on your body, before you take the panados, <laughs> you should command it to go. Take authority. Take authority. Somebody comes to oppress you, you take authority over that situation, that person. You have a financial problem, you take authority over those devils. You have a problem uh, uh, in your relationship, you take authority over those powers of darkness that are trying to destroy your home. Because there is somebody trying to destroy your life. Did you know that? It's not your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your uncle, auntie or your ex-whatever. 
The one trying to destroy your life, his name is Satan. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So there's somebody who's actively working to put you down. This is why you need to stand up, take authority, and put him down. And if you don't put him down, he ends up putting you down. Are you with me? So the Bible says, hey, there's stuff in your life that you go through. You need to take authority and command it. Because Christ is inside you. So when you command, it's actually Christ's power through you making the difference. He takes authority. But when you speak, amen? You know, there's a story. There's a story of a little, uh, uh, a little uh, deer that said to all the animals, I'm the most dangerous thing on the face of the earth. So he first went to an elephant, and he said to the big elephant, don't mess with me, I'm dangerous. The elephant said, <laughs> he said, I said, I'm dangerous. The next minute, the elephant said, ah, and ran away. So, he realized he's really dangerous. He goes to the next animal. He goes and he sees a leopard. He says to the leopard, I'm dangerous. The leopard looks at him, and the leopard runs for his life. Then he goes to a crocodile, and he says to the crocodile, the deer says, don't mess with me, I'm dangerous. The crocodile takes one look at him and runs back into the water for protection. And then he looks into the water, and he sees behind him is a lion. Gotta understand what the story means. It means you are dangerous because of the lion of Judah inside you. You see, his power working through you makes you dangerous. When you when you speak and you command things to happen, his power comes forth and makes it happen. I'm joined by Nora. Now, Nora, where are you coming from? From Pretoria, Maitluf. How did you learn about the Miracle Center? I saw the channel on Faith uh, Channel. So you decided to come visit us as your first visit. How was your experience with us at the Miracle Center? I enjoyed the service and then the people are so welcoming. And you even got healed today as well. Will you share more about your powerful miracle? That was powerful and I was never expecting that. Um, the pastor prayed for me. I had a pain for quite some time, for almost 11 years. In 2011, I went for an op to remove nine balls in my womb. So tonight, I forced my partner to come here so that we can experience the miracles ourselves because we've seen people doing that on TV and I was <laughs> thinking maybe it's not true. I had to come and prove it myself. And have you felt um, God heal you? Yeah, I, fe I felt the warmth in my body. I was so cold. <laughs> and then after that, the pain was gone. After the, the, the prophet paid prayed for me and the pain was gone. Wow, so you actually felt the, the anointing, the power of God touch and heal you. And wow, this is just so incredible. We encourage you to watch more powerful testimonies just like this. Subscribe, watch more episodes, and remember that miracles are normal. Amen. You say, can God do that? Yes, because inside you is a part of God. Oh, let me explain this to you in another way. Remember Jesus that walked on the, on the earth for 2,000 years ago? The same Jesus was Lord of heaven. A portion of that Jesus, well, you can't really cut up God, but let's just say a portion, let's use the word portion of him, has come and has gone inside your body. He's living inside you. So wherever you go, Jesus goes with you. Guess who's sitting next to you right now? Jesus. Guess who's sitting behind you? Jesus. Guess who's sitting in front of you? Jesus. Because every person who was born again has Jesus inside them. This is why he said, greater works than this will you do. You know why? 
Because it's Jesus, 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 all over the place here. Can you imagine how the devil's fright when you turn up? Because why? Jesus is inside you. So you have authority by the fact that Jesus lives inside you. If Jesus did not live inside you, you can talk and talk and talk, nothing will happen. Because you know why? The deer can say what he wants to. But the deer can never change it, can never chase an elephant or a crocodile. And the devil is not actually afraid of you, he's afraid of what's inside you. We spoke about the authority to, to command things. We spoke about creative miracles and instant obedience. They're only possible when you respond immediately. And, and you know, when you procrastinate, a, a, a double-minded person is somebody who procrastinates. The Bible says a double-minded person will receive nothing from the Lord. Why? Because anybody who's double-minded is somebody who loves to procrastinate. And when you love to procrastinate, you always push decisions off and you never set on them. I was speaking at an event last night. I was talking about how to develop a spirit of excellence and the keys to develop a spirit of excellence. And one of the keys is to, is not, is to be single-minded. The Bible talks about being single-mindedness. And single-mindedness or singleness means that when, when God puts something in your spirit to go after it, the moment you start pondering and saying, well, maybe it's not the right time. Let me, well, you know, I'll, I, I want to go to, to America. I want to go to Asia. But, but, you know, now's not the right time. Two years later, well, I got this to do, that to do. Five years later, well, I got that to do, that to do. Then you retire. Now you're too old to go. You missed your breakthrough moment. See, the more you procrastinate in life, the more you lose that blessing that God has for you. So when it comes to miracles, and God says do that, instant obedience brings the blessing. Let's just say you, you go to a, to a function, or you're at work, and you see one of your co-employees, and God says, go to them right now and encourage them. And you say, well, if I do it, what they, they might, I might sound silly. And what will people think that I'm a Christian? What will people say? So you start to procrastinate when God speaks to you. Guess what happens? You had an opportunity from heaven to make a difference in someone's life. But not just make a difference in their life. God wanted you to open the door for him to bless you. So because you procrastinated, you lost an opportunity to touch another life, but you also lost the opportunity for your life to be blessed. It's like when God says, hey, see that person there? It's Christmas time. Go and buy them groceries. And you say, well, give me another message, Lord. Can I have a confirmation? Let me, let, let me wait upon you for the answer. But you know God spoke to you. When you procrastinate, that could have been your breakthrough. Because when you bless someone else, you open the door for God to bless you. But because you delayed it, you delayed and delayed, you stopped your own blessing. But by procrastinating, you missed a miracle moment. Amen? So it's the same when we minister. And let's say there's a word of knowledge. And, 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 and whoever's ministering up here says, hey, someone here has got a problem with their, with their chest. They've got a pain in their heart. And you say, yeah, I've got a pain in my heart. But maybe God is speaking to somebody else. You know, let's see if anyone else goes. Uh -uh. When you procrastinate, that window opens and then it closes. When it closes, you actually missed your breakthrough. See, what do you mean by that? See, there are three ways God does miracles in. But one of the ways he does miracles in is in the glory dimension. Now, the difference between the glory and the anointing is that in the anointing, you must have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you can never have your breakthrough. So even if you're expecting God to heal you of something, whatever it is, you need faith to get healed. There must be a level of faith in the atmosphere. If there's no faith, then you'll miss your miracle. If you're not ready, you know, if you, you say, well, let's see what happens. Nothing happens. 
you must have faith to get healed. Amen? You've heard that, right? You've been taught that. But there is a way to experience a miracle without faith. But that, that is called the glory dimension. Now, the difference between the glory dimension and the anointing dimension is the anointing is with you all the time. The Bible says the anointing abideth with you even, right? So you always, you feel the anointing, you go to church, you experience the anointing, it's there all the time. The glory is not there all the time. The glory only comes in certain locations at certain times. So when the glory turns up, a window is open, you have what we call is open heaven. When there's an open heaven, whoever God speaks to or whoever takes what God is saying receives it that instant. Even if they don't have faith. So let's give you an example. Let's say, uh, let's say I say, listen, there's someone here, you've got a pain in your back and you, you've got a pain in your back. But you don't believe God's going to heal you. Because a word of knowledge was released, a word of knowledge comes with the glory. And a word of knowledge always comes with what we call an open heaven. That means the heaven is open. Every single person, you've got to understand hear this, every single person with a back problem will be healed that instant, even if they have unbelief. But when that window closes, and they come after that. Let's say they come after church. Pastor God was calling me. Yeah, that's great. But the moment has passed. The Kairos moment has passed. Now, if you want God to heal you, you need to have faith for the miracle. Oh, are, are you following me? Are you following me? You see, this is why, in, in, especially in our crusades, we have so many non-believers in our crusades. A large percentage of non-believers because lots of non-believers watch our program. And they know about us. And these people are curious. So they come to our crusades curious. Is this true? Does this Jesus really do the stuff? And when the word of knowledge is released, they are the first ones to respond. Now they come to the front with no faith in Jesus. They don't even believe Jesus is going to do it. They're just coming because there was an altar call made for their condition. And guess what? They all get healed. And once I had a lady and I said to her, she had a problem with her leg. I said, do you believe God will heal you? She said, no. I said, well, whether you believe it or not, you're going to get healed right now. Pray for her, she got healed. She said, I can't believe it, I'm healed. <laughs> Why? Because when you have an open heaven, the miraculous is normal and it is because God said it you receive it not because you pulled it so when we have an open heaven when a word of knowledge is released it's, that heaven is open for that few minutes it's open for that few minutes if you procrastinate and the heavens close you missed your breakthrough you can still get it but you'll need faith now to get it are you following me so an open heaven happens not only in church not only in church maybe uh, you're a business person and God speaks to you and says, see that man there? Go and introduce yourself. And you start to procrastinate double-mindedness. Yeah, should I do it? Maybe you think I'm too pushy. Why are you procrastinating? The heavens close. You missed your breakthrough. Because if you had obeyed instantly, there was something God was going to give you through that instruction. You see, God never gives an instruction without a reward. Never. Every instruction God gives has a reward. So when we talk about an open heaven, 
when we talk about instant obedience it comes with a reward because instant obedience is how God works you know he is it's how miracles happen creative miracles happen instant obedience so the next time God speaks to you drop everything you're doing and obey God will never speak to you if he knows you can't do it let's say God says hey I want you to go and you are watching the Miracle Report here on your Miracle Moment. I'm joined by our sister Lorraine. And wow, Lorraine, you had a problem with your lungs. What exactly was wrong with your lung? I kept having pneumonia and I ended up in hospital and I had to have the operation on my lung. And I've been having problems with the drain and the operation. I've been having pain. And whenever I went to the doctor, he said to me it was scar tissue. But I came here and got Pastor Siva to pray for me and I was healed. I can go without any painkillers and even if it's cold, I don't have any pain on my lung anymore. How long has it been since you've been healed? It was on the 2nd of October. Yes, about that. And no more painkillers? No more painkillers. So I thank God and I give Him the praise and glory. Amen. No more pain, scarred tissue healed from the operation, no more pneumonia healed and touched by Jesus. So we want to encourage you right now to stay tuned to your miracle moment. Keep on watching because miracles are normal.